What's up guys, back with another educational video and before anyone says anything, yes, I have pink fingernails. It was uh, daddy daughter day yesterday and uh, I feel like maybe she'll watch this video on like, my fingernails. So if you don't like them, you know what the door is. So this week we're talking about training volume while in a cut. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for Al Gore. So there's a new study that came out of Germany. I think they attempted to answer a question that I've actually thought about for a long time, which is should you lower, keep the same or increase your volume while in a caloric restriction? There have been all kinds of theories about this over the years. Most popular one that I can recall at first when I was first getting in the fitness industry was, well, when you're on a cut, you're in a calorie deficit, it's catabolic, raising your cortisol, if you train too much, it's gonna raise your cortisol even more, which means it's gonna to lead to muscle loss. So you should reduce your training volume while cutting. Then there was a school of thought as well, no, it's catabolic, so you should do more training because it's gonna be a bigger impetus for you to retain the muscle you already have. It shouldn't be because you're cutting, but just because you've come to a plateau that's natural in training and you're increasing your volume to get past that plateau. And then there are people who say, well, you just gotta keep it the same because it's more about progressive overload. To my knowledge, very few studies or any have tried to address this. So I commend the authors for trying to address this. That being said, I'm not gonna say it's a bad study, but there are some really, really big limitations to the study. They used resistance trained men who had an average of about five to six years of resistance training experience. The inclusion criteria was they had to squat at least their body weight. I hope if you've been training five or six years, you can squat more than your body weight by quite a bit but that's not always the case because the training intensity and consistency that some people have is not what you would see with like top tier bodybuilders and whatnot. So while it's great that they were, you know, trained and experienced lifters, five to six years of training doesn't necessarily mean five to six years of progress. They excluded women from the study because they wanted to take out any sex related differences and just address this question first before testing in a female population, which I think is fine as well. Now, what do they test? They put them on a caloric restriction and either have them do moderate volume or high volume and looked at differences in lean mass, muscle thickness, which was their primary outcome measure, and a few other things. And what did they find? Well, they found no differences between groups. And so that led them to say, well, you know, you don't need to raise your volume. Moderate volume is as good as high volume when on a cut. Seems pretty straightforward. But when you look at the way the study was designed, there are some very severe limitations. The first one is the calorie deficit was very, very mild. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it's a very mild catabolic environment. They had them eat 30 calories per kilogram. Now, if I was doing it, I would have probably made it per kilogram of lean mass, although body fat levels weren't different between the groups. Body fat doesn't really contribute a whole lot to your metabolic rate, your energy expenditure. You can have you know, quite a bit of difference in activity levels throughout the day, not just exercise, but other activity levels. It's a pretty quick and dirty way to do a calorie deficit, but honestly, I think it's fine. I am about 94 kilograms. And so that would mean I would be consuming nearly 3000 calories a day as a calorie deficit. Would it be a calorie deficit for me? Yeah but it'd be pretty darn mild. So was it enough to induce, you know, catabolism between the two groups and they didn't see really losses in lean mass? So perhaps if it had been more severe calorie deficit, maybe they would have seen some differences. Maybe not, but we don't know. The next thing is their definition of high volume and low volume. So they defined high volume as five sets per exercise versus three sets per exercise. And then it was like three sets per exercise versus one sets per exercise for small muscle groups like biceps and triceps. They only did one exercise per muscle group. I would argue that five sets per muscle group is not that high volume. Like if you look at some of the meta regressions and meta analyses on hypertrophy, I mean, really they're looking up to like 25, 30, 40 sets per week per body part as high volume. So you're talking about two sets per muscle group of difference. Small differences like that in volume would be unlikely to show differences in this short a period of time. The other thing is there is some evidence that instead of just randomizing people to high and low volumes, what you really should do is look at their training volume before you start the study and then randomize them to groups that increase their training volume or groups that decrease their training volume. For many people, I'm betting that five sets per muscle group per training session is actually a reduction in volume compared to what they were doing previously. I'm not gonna say it was a bad study. It wasn't a bad study. I just don't think it teaches us very much and I don't think it nearly answers the question of should you raise or lower your volume? Now, what are my personal thoughts on volume? I don't think you should lower your volume because from an evolutionary perspective, if you think about why should the body hold on to muscle mass, if you start to reduce the trigger 
for that muscle mass to exist, which is overload, progressive overload in volume, then why would the body hold on to that muscle if it didn't require it as much? On the same token, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to increase your volume because you are in a calorie deficit and it is gonna be more stressful and you might be at higher risk for injuring yourself or overtraining or some of those sorts of things. I'm more in the camp of keep your volume the same while you're cutting. If you raise it, it's only because it's through a natural progression of progressive overload. And the only modification I'd probably make is modify your exercise selection, especially if you're getting really lean for like a bodybuilding show because free bar back squats while you're crazy lean, while it looks cool and sounds cool, is incredibly fatiguing and challenging and probably not as facilitative for retaining muscle while also not overtraining yourself. Uh, I found that at least for me personally during my contest preparations, I simply could not recover from multiple squat sessions per week. Whereas if I did like hack squats or leg press, I could recover from those and still get the stimulus I needed. All right guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you need help with workouts, make sure you click the link in the description and check out the BioLane Workout Builder where we have all kinds of our evidence-based programming available for $12.99 per month. You get access to all our programs. We take all the guesswork out of your reps, your sets, your intensity, but give you the flexibility to modify exercise selection based on your preference. Have a great one, guys.